The previous example is a special case of this theorem. Let x1, x2 up to xn be a random sample from a continuous population with probability density function f of x defined on the support a is less than x is less than b. If x1, x2 up to xn are the order statistics, then the marginal distribution of the kth order statistic is n factorial divided by k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial CDF capital F of x evaluated at xk to the k minus 1 power 1 minus the population CDF evaluated at x of k to the n minus k power times the probability density function of the population evaluated at xk for all xk values between a and b and k equals 1 through n. Now this is a long formula and it is difficult to memorize this formula. The better way of looking at it is through the proof of the result and even though I won't be giving all the details here they are in the book and incidentally this distribution that you see up here you may recognize as a special case of the multinomial distribution. and that will come out in the outline of the proof below. Well in this geometric proof here is a axis that begins at A and ends at B. Now once you set that up somewhere between A and B you know that this kth order statistic will land somewhere so let's put that spot right here let's say that this is x sub k that happens to be the value of the kth order statistic well that means that one observation will fall right here well once you know that you also know that between a and that order statistic if this is the kth order statistic then exactly k minus 1 of the observations must fall between a and that kth order statistic. Furthermore, between that kth order statistic and b, exactly n minus k of the obser observations must fall here. So as a quick check, if k minus 1 falls here, 1 falls here, and n minus k fall here, if you add up k minus 1 plus 1 plus n minus k, that accounts for all n of the observations. Next, the probability of falling here. If you were to take any observation and try to estimate the probability that they will fall between a and x sub k, you would say that is the probability fx of x evaluated at x sub k. And by the way, that shows up right here. So that's the probability of falling in that region and we know that k minus 1 did fall in that region and that's where the exponent comes from. Likewise the probability of falling to the right of x sub k will be 1 minus the population CDF evaluated at x sub k And you'll notice that shows up right here, raised to the n minus k power, because we saw n minus k fall there. Finally, the probability of the one observation falling at x sub k is taken care of right here. That is with respect to one ordering. This is the number of orderings out front here, which is n factorial divided by k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial. There's a built-in 1 factorial that you don't see here 
for this last term. And that's kind of the geometry associated with this particular result. Now, fortunately, this result generalizes um, to, for example, looking at two order statistics at a time. And here is xi and xj, where the subscript i is less than the subscript j, and that means x sub i will be less than x sub j. The joint PDF of xi and xj will be this long expression, and here is the geometry associated with the thinking. There will be a little bit less detail this time. Here is A, here is B, here is the ith order statistic x sub i, here is where the jth order statistic x sub j falls. We know that one observation will fall here and one observation will fall here. If this is the ith order statistic, then we must have i minus 1 observations falling here. If this is x sub j, then we must have n minus j observations falling here. And how many fall between xj and xi? There will be j minus i minus 1 observations falling here. Now to see if we did the accounting right, we can add i minus 1 plus 1 plus j minus i minus 1 plus 1 plus n minus j. And when you add those five values up, you will get n. And so that is all been done properly. Finally, what is the probability of falling in this region right here? Well, that probability of falling there is just f of x sub i. The probability of falling way out here is 1 minus capital F of x sub j. And what is the probability of falling in between these two values? Well, that's just the CDF evaluated at x sub j minus the CDF evaluated at x sub i. Now with all of those pieces put together, you can see what we have. This term right here accounts for this first piece. This term right here accounts for the second piece. This term right here accounts for this third piece. And finally, the last two account for the single observations that fall right there.